Hello, this is Professor Scott Norman in the Automatic Transmission Lab at Pittsburgh State University, and we are on our fifth video segment on compressor identification and just basic operation. And today we are talking about our second coaxial piston style compressor. So we're looking at this guy right here. And so can students identify what this is? So we take a look at it, some of the unique marks on it. If you take a look at right there, you see looks like uh, cylinders. And then if you look at the back, there's a, a head there. But if you look at the front over here, there is no head. There's like a cast iron plate to take it apart. And so that's it. And so the key here is that this is a coaxial style compressor, very similar to the other style of coaxial compressor, but this is a single acting compressor versus the other one we looked at in the last video was a, a dual acting. And so this is a single acting compressor. And so what's different about it is that if I take a look at what's inside of it, the pistons, this one has seven of them. And so this is sitting on a, a wobble plate. <laughs> I may have called the other compressor wobble plate. And if I did, I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, when you start looking at, at textbooks and industry, there's uh, half the books will call this a wobble plate and the other half will call it a swash plate. The, um, the hydraulic industry will call it a swash plate. Uh, the textbook that we have tends to call this a, um, a wobble plate versus the dual acting compressor as a, a swash plate. It, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. It's just that um, it, it just depends on who you read as far as what that is. But, um, but the difference on this is that, you know, this is going to be sitting on an angle. And so the key is that pistons are only facing one side. Pistons are going to be facing the back where the head's at. So these cylinders right here, or these pistons will be in the cylinders around around right here. And so this is a, probably a better view up here is what this is. So I got my input shaft, which is gonna be facing the front. So this guy is facing like this. And then I got my my wobble plate, make sure I say it right. And then as I spin it, I could take a look at those pistons. And they move very, very similar to the dual acting style. The big difference on this one though, is that since it is a single acting unit, I can, um, I can do something special with it. And that is I can make this variable displacement. And so if I take a look at this, this wobble plate right now, this wobble plate is almost straight up and down. So it's almost straight up and down. And so since it's almost straight up and down, when I take a look at how far these pistons are moving, they're not moving very far. They're not very, they're not moving very deep in the bore. In fact, I could maybe try to change my angle a little bit. Let's try that. If I take a look at it, you see those pistons, maybe put it on an angle. They don't move very, very far. Okay, and so that's very little displacement. That may be a mild dead. If I take my, um, my wobble plate and move the angle of it, so the key is make it, make it more of an angle. So instead of having this straight up and down like this on a, a, a higher angle from straight up and down, okay, at that point, the pistons are able to um, uh, travel further. And so this is one of the uh, uh, originating ways of, of making it a variable displacement compressor, which is kind of neat. So the, the question comes into students is that, you know, if, if they're taking a look at a, at, a, at a compressor, how do they tell if it's variable displacement or if it's not? And so uh, that's, obviously you can look at the service information and that could tell you, but I tend to well, want to look at uh, the, the compressor itself. Number one, I have to identify it as a single acting coaxial wobble plate style compressor. But what I want to look at is that I, I want to look at the, uh, the head area because in order to make this variable displacement, I have to change the angle of that wobble plate. In order to change the angle of the wobble plate, I have to allow pressure to get back behind here and allow pressure to be relieved from that area. And so in order to do that, there has to be valving in there somewhere, either mechanical valving or electronic valving. And so, so the key here is that if you take a look at the compressor and if you see some type of valve in there, now this guy right here on this compressor is the blow off valve. So that's, you know, if pressure gets, let's say to 500 pounds of pressure and, and the system does not kick off, the refrigerant will all exit out of there. I've right? seen that a couple of times with a bad pressure transducer. They, uh, they turn the fan on, they also kick the system off when um, pressure gets too high. And if they're reading 70 PSI all the time, Pressure is going to build, build, build. Uh, the fans never kick on because they never see it get above, you know, 200, and eventually all the refrigerant is going to come out of that. 
uh, uh, blow off valve right there. But so, so the key is, is that I want to make sure that I'm not looking at like a high pressure cutoff switch or something like that in compressor. And so what I see right here is I see a bore right there and I see a, a valve in there. So, so this guy would be an example of a variable displacement signal acting coaxial compressor. If I take a look at this guy right here, you know, this is an older style. Uh, I have the blow off valve, very similar right there. Uh, I have a, um, looks like probably maybe, a, I'm guessing a high pressure cutout switch, probably right there on that. Um, I take a look at it, I see a head in the back. I do not see a head in the front, you know, I don't have my clutch on right now. And so I kind of see the cylinders right there. So, 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 so this area right here is the wobble chamber, you know, that's where the wobble plate is and that's where it's going to change the angle of that. And I um, take a look at this, this is a cutaway on it, but what I see right here is I see two valves. And so these are two old mechanical valves on this that is uh, uh, allow pressure to either enter the wobble chamber or vent the wobble chamber. Now, now right now, this, this, this wobble plate is at, at a very, very high angle, at a very high angle. So it's kind of like this for us to trip it down. Remember, if that plate's straight up and down, we have very little displacement. You know, that's a very mild dead. If it's angled like this, then that's uh, the maximum displacement, meaning, uh, you know, very, very hot dead. And so there's right now no pressure in this wobble plate right now. It's all vented out. So if all the pressure behind the wobble plate is vented out, so all the pressure behind this right here is vented out, then the big spring in there is gonna, is gonna make it uh, on a heavy angle, which makes it maximum displacement, okay? So what happens is that when, when these valves move, you know, they are uh, taking suction pressure, taking discharge pressure, they're sensing that, they're allowing your discharge pressure to, uh, to build, you know, when your uh, high side gets high, uh, uh, it's going to vent. The pressure is going to vent all this out of the uh, wobble plate and allow it to have maximum displacement. If you have a mild condition where your um, discharge pressure is low, it's going to uh, uh, release the uh, vent valve, we'll call it, or it will close it off and allow some pressure, discharge pressure to, to, to build. And when the pressure d builds, <laughs> you know, at the very front of this wobble chamber, it's going to start pushing it. So it's like this, it's going to start pushing it straight up and down, which is going to allow minimum displacement. And so, you know, right now, there's no pressure back here, so it's maximum displacement. So that's what they did, you know, back in the 80s and back in the 90s. Um, uh, nowadays, uh, we're not using what we, what we see right here as far as mechanical valves to control the pressure uh, in the wobble chamber. What we're using is we're using electronic solenoids. And so this is... Um, uh, a, a, a fairly newer, um, modern, um, uh, single acting, uh, coaxial compressor. Uh, I, I see the head on the back of it, you know, uh, you know, it's very easy to turn. It's, it's very light. It's under 10 pounds. This thing's about nine pounds. So this is about the lightest compressor I have. But if I take a look at it, it has a, oh, there's my, what I call my blow off valve right there, but I have a solenoid. Right in here. Now, solenoid isn't just a pressure switch, you know, uh, it, it goes down there fairly deep. And so that's my electronic solenoid that is allowing um, uh, the wobble chamber to build up pressure or not. So, if I want, if I don't, so, so something that's also unique about this compressor is that it's a, a clutchless design. So, it's, um, uh, it has a pulley on it, it has a bearing on it, but it has, it has no clutch. So, when the engine's spinning, this thing is spinning all the time. And so what's happening is that if I don't want my AC on, if it's a mild day, I'm going to turn off my solenoid. If I turn off my solenoid, it is going to allow pressure to build up in that wobble chamber. And that pressure in the wobble chamber, the solenoid, by being turned off, turned off, it's going to allow pressure to build up. It's going to take that wobble plate and it's going to bring it straight up and down vertical. And at that point, it's not going to, it's not going to pump anything. Uh, if I turn my AC on and I start increasing the duty cycle from 1% to 2% to 3% to 4% to 5%, what's going to happen in there is that it's going to start releasing all that pressure uh, in the wobble chamber, which is at the front. And by doing that, that's slowly going to change the angle. And it could be anywhere from, you know, straight up and down to whatever the maximum angle is for that particular compressor for maximum displacement. And it will go up higher and higher and higher to the maximum value. So, so what's weird about this particular compressor is that, you know, you want to see if the AC's on. We're used to just popping the hood and looking to see if the clutch is engaged. Well, kind of hard to see that because of this particular unit, this thing is spinning all the time. If the AC is on or if the AC is off. So, uh, 
there is a concern about these compressors that if I turn this thing all the way off and if my wobble plate uh, angle is straight up and down and there's no movement in the pistons at all, I still have my input shaft spinning. So I still have bearings that are spinning and I don't have any lubrication going through the system. So some, some, some companies are um, designing these to where there's just a small little angle uh, where it will pump just a little bit of refrigerant through the system to help try to keep these bearings and everything lubricated because you don't want your um, brand new compressor on your $80,000 vehicle to go out within the first year that you, uh, you own it. Something else that's unique about this particular system is that this guy here is off of a, um, I think this is off of an implement, so this has a John Deere tag on it. And it it's a sanding compressor. I see a lot of these on, you know, Dodge pickup trucks or something like that. But it has a front cover on it, and so that front cover is to help keep dust and stuff like that out of the clutch. But the problem is, is that when you look down at it, you, you can't see the clutch, you know? You're seeing the, the, the pulley spin, pulley spinning all the time, but it's not just something you can do as a visual inspection in order to say, hey, is that clutch on, is that clutch not on? You know, you're gonna have to do other things. You're gonna have to feel, feel that discharge line. Is it hot? Be careful, it will be hot. Uh, feel that suction line. If it's cold, if the su suction line is cold, the discharge line is hot where you can't touch it, you kind of have to do one of these things. Well, you know that your AC is on. <laughs> if both lines are the same temperature, well, then you know that your clutch is in engaged. They do allow you to take out a couple screws and then you can then pull off your, your cover here, your dust cover, in order to, to see if the clutch is physically engaged. Physically, if you want to turn it, you know, see if it can move, make sure it's not locked up, you could do that also. So just wanted to let you guys know that you, you'll see some of those. And that is the coaxial style. Now, I always have to think about it. Coaxial style, single acting, wobble plate design compressor. So, so far we have covered in these five videos, five different compressors that are all piston style. So we had the inline style, we had the, the V style, we have the uh, radial style, and then we have two coaxial compressors. One is a single acting compressor like these that have a wobble plate on it. And then you have the dual acting compressor that has a squash plate on it. This is Scott Norman, and we're going to be covering the rotary compressors next. Uh, thank you very much, and you guys have a good day.